Sometimes meditating is easy, sometimes it's hard. We have to keep our minds on an even keel, whether it's easy or hard. In other words, when it gets easy, don't get complacent. If you get complacent, things start loosening up, like screws loosening up in your car. And after a while, things begin to rattle and then they fall apart. Same time, when things don't go well, don't get upset. Rule number one, try to keep the mind on an even keel. Have a strong sense of the observer, the part of the mind that's simply watching what's going on. And identify as much as you can with that. And John Sowett tells the story of how when he first went to stay with John Munn, his mind seemed to be all over the place. He'd sit and meditate and be thinking about this, thinking about that, and was afraid to tell it to a John Munn for fear of what a John Munn might say. But then he realized, well, we're here. To, I'm here to learn. So he wanted to see how a John Munn would, what kind of advice he would give. So he went and told him what was happening in his meditation. And John Munn said, well, at least that's the beginning point. The fact that you're aware of what's happening. It's better than most people who are not aware of anything at all. And then he quoted that. Discourse on the Foundations of Mindfulness, that being aware of a scattered mind, when it's scattered, that's one of the foundations of mindfulness. And then John Swat handled that very well. He said he realized that John Munn was not praising him, but he was giving him some comfort, giving him some encouragement. Not saying that where you are is just fine where you are. But also reminding him that it wasn't a total disaster. that the fact that he was meditating was better than, the, than not meditating at all, which often happens with people when things don't go well in their meditation. They say, well, tonight's just not my night to meditate. you do better to stop. Not meditating is not the answer. Even though it may not be pleasant, sitting through a bad meditation is better. Because there may be some point in there that you finally come to your senses and you see something you didn't see before. This is why that sense of the observer is so important. In the canon they talk about the person who's got his, his or her theme of meditation well in hand. And the image is of a person sitting who's watching someone who's lying down, or a person standing who's watching someone who's sitting. In other words, you place yourself a little bit above what's going on and then just watch it, see what's happening, get a sense of where the imbalance is in your mind. Watch what you're doing exactly. Why is the meditation going poorly? What's lacking? John Fuhrman once said that it, you try to make mental note of those seven steps, or the seven component factors that John Lee talks about in his method number two. And then compare your meditation with that. See what's lacking. If you've got all seven component factors, the mind is going to settle down, it's going to be still and mindful and solid. So check to see what's lacking. Are you not clear about the length of the breaths? Are you not clear about whether the breath is comfortable? Are you not spreading the comfortable breath, breath sensations? Do you not have a resting place for the mind and the breath and the body? Just go down the list. And if you find any of the component factors is missing, try to make up for the, for the lack. But again, to do this, you have to have that sense of the observer, the person who's watching and doesn't get upset by what's happening, doesn't get carried away by what's happening, but just watches in total neutrality. When you can watch in this way, then even a bad meditation doesn't become a disaster. You take it as a challenge. Tonight's meditation may be a little bit different from last night's. Last night's may have gone well. You start out tonight, and things don't seem to be quite so well. Okay, is it a question of the body? Is there something wrong with the breath? Something wrong with your energy level? Are you too manic? Are you too depressed? There are lots of different factors that can be 
playing a role here, either from the factors in the mind or factors in the body. If your energy level is too low, you can change the way you breathe to energize yourself. If it's too frenetic, you can calm it down. And try to be as precisely observant as possible. Many times the meditation, what makes the difference in the meditation is the details, the little things. And if you're not paying careful attention, simply going through the motions, you miss a lot. And you may missing, be missing something important, even though it seems minor. So you try to go through it very meticulously. Be very observant. Be close in your powers of observation. There's a word in Thai. I mentioned it a while back. It's called. It talks about the closeness, say, of the teeth in your comb, or the pickets in a fence. Things that are very close together. They also use it to describe the frequency of a radio signal. The higher the frequency, the closer the frequency is in the in the Thai phrase. So once you're, you want your acts of mindfulness, your acts of alertness, to be very close right next to each other, without leaving a lot of gaps. Otherwise, if you leave a lot of gaps, there's plenty of time in the mind for the curtains to come down and they can change the scenery and then you're off someplace else. But if your mindfulness is close like this, then they have no time to bring down the curtain. If they're going to change the scenery, you see it happening. And it destroys the illusion. So whatever happens in the meditation, always stop, stop and take stock of where is the observer right now. The part of the mind that can simply watch and not be moved by events at all. We're so used to living in the part of the mind that's constantly pushed around by events that it almost seems traitorous to step back and be in the part of the mind that's not moved by anything at all, not touched by anything at all. It just watches, sees what's going on. There is that corner in the mind all the time. So try to locate it. Get familiar with it. Learn how to make that your stance so that whatever happens, you see it clearly for what it is. You clearly see the connection between cause and effect. And that gives you a, puts you in a position where you can start using your ingenuity to make changes. Adjust things here. Adjust things there. Try this. Try that. Even if what you try doesn't work out, well, you've learned something. That particular tactic doesn't work here. If you take this attitude, then no matter how well the meditation goes or how poorly the meditation goes, it's always an opportunity to learn. Mm 